So there are only two theories for the Colgate who are really worth looking at. One, of course, is Ellen Ostrom, and if you don't know about Ostrom, she was not from the left, um, she was an economist, so far so bad, and she was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize for economics for her work on the Commons. And it basically was in the belly of the beast actually saying if you look at the economics, there are different ways of doing it. And the other one, of course, was Karl Marx. So, you know, I'd, I'd briefly say something to both of them and then briefly talk a little bit and then stop. So, um, Marx in Capital, Volume 3, said, even in entire society, a nation, or all simultaneously existing societies taken together, are not the owners of the earth. They're simply its possessors, its beneficiaries, and have to bequeath it in an improved state to succeeding generations. That's green politics in a paragraph from Marx, I think, in the 1860s. Um, if you don't like Marx, um, I can read you from Ostrom. Our problem is how to craft rules at multiple levels that enable humans to adapt, learn and change over time so that we're sustaining the very valuable natural resources that we inherited so that we may be able to pass them on. I am deeply indebted to the indigenous peoples in the US who had an image of seven generations being the appropriate time to think about the future. I think we should all reinstate in our mind the seven generation rule. When we make really major decisions, we should ask not only what it will do for me today, but what it will do for my children, my children's children, and their children's children into the future. So two quotes, also sometimes writing about Ostrom, you know, I'm looking at all this stuff and she makes Althusser look like dickheads, it can be quite dense. But what both Marx and Ostrom say is that the obvious, that what you need is democratic ownership of resources and that you need to maintain those resources ecologically. And what they talk about is the commons, democratic common <coughs> ownership. And if we look at the ecological crisis, the economic crisis, it's about politics, power and governance. If we don't have control of the resources, we can't govern those resources in a way which is sustainable. And what you have from the powers that be, what you have from the media, and the same way you have the secret agents sleeping with people, you have the Daily Mail and the Sun, and all those evil fuckers, you know, all part of the suicide lobby, you know, where people are destroying themselves and destroying the planet. And what you have is economics within that kind of power matrix, and econo economists say, privatise everything. The market is the only thing which is efficient. And what's important about Ostrom's work is she said, there's a whole spectrum of ways of owning resources. It is possible to have common ownership in terms of the commons. And she did all the nitty gritty, really dull microeconomics. You know, it's kind of microeconomics beyond money of how people maintain resources democratically and ecologically. So what she literally did was looked at where indigenous people, fishers, so on, um, had, you know, um, seas, forests, so on, that they owned collectively. And she looked at where this had worked, where this had failed, came up with kind of design rules or principles, because she would say these would vary in other ways. And quite often on the left we talk about common ownership. What's really important about Ostrom is she actually went in did the case study work, said there are different ways of making this work, and I think all the time we have to know in a very rigorous way about how common ownership can be practical work. So what she did was really put that on the agenda, that you can own things democratically, that, that challenges the market and purely private ownership, because we know with the market it's all about profit now, that even if the profit is going to kill you, you're still obsessed with making the profit. Occasionally, naive people say, um, if you're fighting the cuts, you're not fighting for the planet. That's entirely wrong, because we know with the cuts agenda, it's about privatising everything, and then things are owned as shares, they're controlled by hedge funds, and it's all about that short-term planet, um, um, short-term profit. And we know that the dominant market system is a cancer. We know that it is killing all of us. And the people who run the corporations, they know that as well, but they're fucking addicted to the nicotine. So we have to smash that 
and Ostrom gave the very cautious, well-researched ways of actually saying there's an alternative. But we must not forget Marx, you know, that what you have is not just the ability to prove that alternatives work, you have to fight for them. What we suffer from quite often in the movement is, wouldn't it be nice if we lived in a nice world? Yes, it would be fucking nice, but we don't. <laughs> um, you know, what appalls me is that so much of what we do, we have broad slogans, we have villains, we have heroes, we say, wouldn't it be lovely? What we've got to do all the time is think strategically and tactically about how we get change. And the change we need is one of, you know, class struggle, you know, what you look at with the Daily Mail, all of these people, the corporations, it's about actually taking from all of us and concentrating wealth and power amongst a tiny minority. So we shouldn't be, aware, be afraid of those words class struggle, because the people who practice that most aggressively are the powers that be. And what this is about is property ownership, democratic control of property. If you look at Marx's project, he looked at how the land was enclosed, how resources were enclosed, and from him, communism is where you restore that democratic ownership. So we have to have those struggles, struggles are happening here, in Colombia with the oil fields, and the struggles around ecology are essentially struggles for ownership, where corporations want to come in, they want to take the oil out of the ground and the coal and so on. Um, you know, and what we have to do is fight that in a concrete way. Now, um, you know, even talking about that seems irrelevant because you've done the business. But what I would say is, you can have a democratic ecological system. This involves great practical labour and intellectual labour. Read your Ostrom, read your Marx. When I've done the book, just steal it, it's far too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I salute you. <laughs>